Hello and welcome. So here it is, the RCF HDM45. Square badge again. And you can see the driver through the grill. Whereas with a lot of the new speakers, you can't see the drivers. They have a disguised mesh or a mesh that disguises the driver. And you can't see it. I don't mind it hasn't got it. I just thought that was a new thing that you have a mesh that disguises the driver. So the front looks a lot more professional. Very tough grill on this. I'll show you later on just to compare. Bit of sunlight coming in. Quick look around it. Got a grab handle on the side. Flying point. Another grab handle on the side. And your last grab handle on the top. Just like the other grab handles, very strong and sturdy. And a rubbery-ish feel to it. At first when I saw this speaker, I wasn't too keen on the way it looks. I thought straight away that it looks very much like the DBRs from Yamaha. Because the DBR was the budget end of the Yamaha series of loudspeakers, I didn't think it would be good to look like a speaker that wasn't one of the top flight or the flagship models. But it's grown on me. I like the soft rounded edges. The grill is nice. I don't even mind that it hasn't even got the film behind it to keep it more discreet. The fact that you can see the drivers, big deal. I've got to like this a lot. Just the way it looks, the finish, and the options in the DSP that you can alter the way that this speaker sounds. So you can alter it for conditions where you are. In this speaker, you have far listening and close listening presets, which I've never seen before. And you also have the boost high frequency and the boost low frequency options that you normally do see in DSP on other models. The options in the DSP are there to alter the way this sounds, to make it sound as perfect as you can in the location that you're setting. Moving on. With the speaker you get a very long three meter cable and you also get the adapter on the end to fit to the end of the plug for your country's power requirements. And you also get the RCF registering material and the warranty. A look at the business end. Just look at the back, as you can see, it's a convection cooled amplifier. Slightly different to the cooling fins on the previous models. They were straight, this has got a recess. New design, looks good. As you press that rotary dial, you get the different options, the gain, the delay, the signal, and you can choose one of the many options available there. They come up on the screen and you can select whichever setting you want. Still has the Made in Italy on the back. Speak on this time. You have the input and the link out or the through, but there's no on off switch on this. A bit strange. For some reason they've decided to do that. That's just the way it is. I'll just power it up. It will be so much easier to explain. On the back, you have got the data input and you've got the data link. And as you can see, you've got local setup and bypass switch on the top right. That also reads, just to zoom in on that, so you can read all of that. Recall RD net setup. When you first turn it on, you get these lights flashing, press it once, and you get the LED flashing for gain reduction power. Turn it clockwise, you get that. Turn it anti-clockwise, you get that. Press it again, you get the delay, LED flashing, turn it clockwise, you get this. Turn it anti-clockwise, you get this. Press it once more, 
you get the presets. It says preset limiter, and you have a yellow LED flashing. Start to turn it clockwise, you get L2, you get L3, L4, C1, C2, F1, F2, all the presets that you have below. So it tells you what each one does. Press it once more. Back to delay. Press it once more. And you're back to press it once more and you're back to zero. You can sort of see lines through the body. Not a bad thing, nothing wrong with that, but you can see where there's some stiffening in this construction. Just something I just noticed. One thing I've noticed about the HCM45 is that grill doesn't have any support points throughout it. Usually there's a bit of the speaker protruding or a bit of the mold protruding just to make the grill more stiff so that it keeps it away from the drivers. Also that if you press anything up against it, it can withstand that and it doesn't dent inwards because that's a big space of a grill to be held on by four screws. You'd think the middle at least would be susceptible to any kind of forces that will cause the grill to damage and bend. But let me quickly show you something. All right, here goes, All right. This is that big grill on the HDM, All right? I'm gonna force it down now, try and get as flat as I can to the speaker so you can see the grill. Right, let's have a look, let's have a look. I'm pushing, you can sort of see it going in a little bit. I'm trying to, it is quite difficult. I know a lot of it's the shadow of my hand where you can see I haven't pushed it in at all. I'm, you can see it bowing a little. Let me try and keep it still. I don't know if you can see it. I'm really pressing down on that, really forcing it. 745. The whole grill is flexing so much. The amount of flex, you can see it, look. The whole flex in that grill. It's amazing how tough the grill on the HDM is. Just something I thought I'd show you. Just a quick view, side to side. The strength of the grill could be just down to the fact that it's been installed convex or curved, bent outwards, so that it can withstand pressures from the outside. As I said, I can't see anything behind the grill that is supporting it, making it so rigid. Just a quick look on the underside of both of the speakers. You can see that they both have the pole mount. So the ultimate question, what does the HDM45 sound like? If you watched my uploads before, you know I love the 745. The sound that comes out of it is what you would call the perfect two-way 15 inch. The sound, incredible. So the ultimate question now is, what does the HDM have to offer? What does it sound like? As you know, the 745, tough that is extremely tough to beat what that delivers throughout every category type of speaker that's quite unbeatable it can offer so much well now there's the hdm i put both of them through the paces just to let you know that this is what i have been doing my stringent tests on it's an old model but to tell you the God's honest truth, the preamps in this. I know Zoom's doing it at the moment, but this is my trusty reference that I used during my tests. And it gave me all the evidence I needed to find out which was which, playing back and playing back and playing back. Also my ear, 
actually listening to both of them to compare which one I thought was the winner. I know the Zoom portable handhelds are doing it at the moment, but this is a good model to look for if you're looking for a very good portable recorder. So let's get to the conclusion. So many different genres of music, listening to different passages to find out where the detail was, how it handled the music, extreme volume levels, lower listening levels. Let me just tell you one thing first before I get to that. Sorry about this. When I put the 745 up against the NX, I was jumping up and down when it was playing music at high levels. It, I'm not saying it obliterated the NX45, but it beat it. It beat it. And some people will find it hard to believe. I can't understand that quite a few people still think these wooden enclosures are fantastic. It's not down to the enclosure alone. There are many more factors into how a speaker sounds. There's so much circuitry inside that you can tailor a speaker to sound how you want it to sound. You've got to just look straight away at the HDM and you find out that there's different presets. Imagine one speaker just has one preset. Each manufacturer, apologies for the doorbell, each manufacturer will try to tune their speaker the way they think it should sound, that it can deliver music the way they wish it to be delivered. So whether it's wood, plastic or metal, the speakers are gonna sound different. So don't think straight away, oh, it's a plastic speaker. And it's not gonna sound as good as a wooden enclosure. Rubbish, absolute rubbish. That 745 sounded incredible against the NX45. And I was jumping up and down when the low frequencies coming out of it. And I just said straight away, you do not need a sub with this on a tripod. The 745 on a tripod, you do not need a sub when you've got the boost on. The grill does bounce. The grill is bouncing up and down, but the speaker's got it covered. It delivers. Please believe me, the NX45 does not sound as good as the 745. Well, it is my opinion, but I'm gonna just say the NX doesn't sound as good. Unfortunately, my upload was blocked due to copyright material in the demo. So unfortunately, I don't have that. That upload was made, I put it on YouTube, I uploaded it, and it was immediately blocked worldwide. So unfortunately, I can't share it. But if you do want to see the video, I'm not on Facebook, I'm not on Instagram, I'm not on Twitter, but if you want me to send you that file, by all means, drop me your email if you can, and I will send you the file and you can listen to it for yourself and come to your conclusion. But coming back to the HDM against the 745, this is tough. This is absolutely tough. As I said earlier on, <laughs> don't worry, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. As I said earlier on, once I knew that the HDM was coming out and it had presets, I said to myself, it's going to have a preset that is just exactly the same or very similar to the 745. I put them both for their paces. The HDM. Where the heck did they get the detail from? Where the heck did RCF... <laughs> the amount of detail that that extracts and... Viewers, don't think that if a speaker's got lots of detail, it sounds too bright and it sounds too um, cold. You want the detail. You want the detail. If you don't want the detail in your mixes, you can always cut it back through a mixer. Or you can use another preset. The detail that comes out of that HDM, I'm not joking, it makes the HDM like a sharp razor sharp knife and it makes the 745 like a pallet knife the hdm it's a lot of money for that speaker i think it's about is it about 12 to 12 to around 12 to 1400 not going to believe this 
it's worth every penny. The HDM with its DSP, you've got all the offerings in the unit. I was considering, is it a good buy? Because I was thinking, can you compare it or not compare it, but which would you rather spend money on? It's a lot of money. If you've got a good budget, you're okay. It's a lot of money. You might want to consider a compact line array. They are very good. There's so many about there to choose from. But this HDM45, it's worth absolutely every single penny. What it delivers, the detail. I kept playing backwards and forwards, HDM, 745, which sounds better. I kept having to get them both on the pole, try one, then try the other, put them on the floor, try one, then try the other, outdoors, indoors. The HDM has it. If you want the low frequencies, I think you go to the, oh, I can't remember what it is now, the preset, but you put that in straight away, yeah. It beats it. It beats the 745 on boost and the linear. Um, I think it was quite similar, the linear, but straight away, there's so much more detail in the passages. I speak so highly of the 745s simply because of the sound that they reproduce. But the HDM, the highs and the mids, how they reproduce the percussion, the vocals, there's no harshness whatsoever. It's absolutely there. The low frequencies, they're not muffly, they're not muddy. You, you'd be so surprised of the sound quality that these reproduce. The 745, it has to give up its crown. The 745 is still an incredible speaker. And if you think what you can get those used if you can find, this is the Mark III. I don't know what the Mark IV sounds like. So this is the Mark III I am referring to. You can pick one of these up for a very good price. Maybe half the price of a HDM. So it's still definitely worth a buy. But when it comes to that crown, the HDM 45 has that now. The low frequencies that come out of it, beats the 745 even on boost just please take my word for it the HDM <laughs> I know I don't sound very upbeat but the 745 it had a long reign and I just don't know what's happened this HDM To tell you the honest truth, I'm in a state of shock. It seems as if somebody's come into my house and have changed the internals and circuitry in my 745s. I tested the HDM up against one 745 and I thought to myself, there's something wrong with this 745 that I just never really noticed. So I used the other 745. Same result. It's just managed to deliver so much I'm going to commit myself to something now and I'm going to say don't even demo it just buy it mobile DJs if you consider the size of the events that you're doing these two speakers are going to be the only two speakers you need to pack for your larger events you can put these on far listening and these speakers have got so much power and for your smaller events You've got the close listening option and the sound quality from these. You're not going to want much more than this. These speakers are a lot of money and I would never really suggest that a mobile DJ spend, let's say TT money on speakers, simply because you don't need to. But this speaker is a shining star. It's something that you need in your arsenal. If you consider your files and your equipment. You need very good speakers to represent your sound. And what these can offer the mobile DJ or what these can offer you in your packages, your setup, this is a speaker that you need to get. The presets, they cover 
every single aspect, every single thing you require when it comes to your sound. That's all I have to say. Poor 745. I, the HDM, it's the one to get. It is, I thought it would be, and it was very tough, very tough to digest that. Not because I didn't want the HDM to be better. Of course, I didn't want to spend the extra money. And I was, I was hoping to tell everybody that the 745 still has it going, but it's the HDM from now on 